Jimmy was just talking about it. As Jeff Weaver joins us here in the booth, we don't hear from Jeff Weaver enough. Big part of that 2006 championship team, and welcome back to St. Louis. Oh, thanks for having me. Great to be here, no doubt. Hard to believe it's been 10 years. It really is. I mean, 10 years is a long time, but it really seems like yesterday. I mean, it's one of the best seasons uh, from being at the bottom to going to the top, <laughs> being released, and finding a team that uh, everything worked out for. It was incredible. Jimmy, what did this guy mean to you? Well, like I said before, I don't think that he gets enough credit for doing what he did. There was so much of a nucleus of that team over the years and then you get a guy like this who kind of a little bit of unheard of even though he had a great career and then without him we don't win we just Period. don't win and uh, he pitched lights out and he went out there I remember the last game and you keep seeing it on the highlights over and just kept going out there inning after inning after inning and he was dialed in and he, he wasn't saying anything he was like don't interrupt me I'm working <laughs> is that what it was like for you. Well, I, I just remember when I first came over here, uh, sat down with uh, Tony in the office, and he said, "We just want you to go out there and compete." And I knew I I knew how to do that. So, yeah. um, you know, it took a little while to to get in a groove, but um, you know, when the action starts happening at the end of the year, and we're right there, and that's what you play for, and once you get there, um, you, you have to take it to another level. I mean. Each game is um, as intense as as can be. That's what we all play for. And I mean, look how close those games were all through <laughs> yeah. that playoffs. It did, was. Did you ever think you could turn it up like that? Now that you look back, do you realize how intense you were in that last game? I just knew that this was the ultimate. I mean, this is what we play the game for: to be able to pitch the clinching game in the World Series in a, a city like St. Louis. With the great fans and and what it means to everybody, um, I just knew I had to slow things down because your heart's racing and um, you know the journey I've been on in New York and other sure. places has, had helped um, uh, and I didn't want to pass this opportunity up. I wanted everything to go perfectly and thank God it did. How about Dave Duncan? What what did he do for you? I mean, we hear about all the time. He, he gets a guy and he's able to figure out maybe just one little thing that that clicks for that pitcher. What did he do for you if anything. Well for me it was his presence. I, you know he's. Uh, a stoic kind of figure you know. Sure. Uh, he's always thinking. Um, you'd sit down with the notebook. He'd go over the repertoire what you have and what's going to work against these hitters and he would break it down and. Having Yachty behind the plate, yeah, to to also incorporate that, it was just a, a really calming feeling for anybody that takes them out. Do you ever think that Yachty would be this type of player this long? Well, we've heard about the Molina brothers for a while, and when you knew them from Anaheim, it was just the uh, they always said the younger brother was the best one, and when I came here, you could instantly see that. Sure. Yes. Yeah, the, the, you get the older too, and then this guy shows up out of nowhere. And what's funny too is I remember before you got there, Yachty just being the kind of that he was like that pudgy catcher that was the up and coming guy and was just riding the bike and riding the bike. And all of a sudden you see the end result, but like this guy, even from 04 on, was just one of those guys who would just go out there and that calmness and, the the, calmness. and, and, and he guys, controls it. Something about those meetings you must have had in, in the playoffs where just everybody was on the same page. It had to be insane. I promise you, he was one of the catchers where you rarely, if any time, shake off. I mean, keep the pace going, see the sign, trust it, and believe in it. And you could do that with Yachty behind the plate. Ozuna racing to third to wave him in. And Miami takes a 1 0 lead on a double by Johnson, his fifth double of the year, drives in his 13th. And it's a 1 0 Miami Marlins lead. And you mentioned you had been through so much, especially in New York, obviously, and the, the scrutiny that happens with the press and the big stage. Then you come to a city like St. Louis that's starved for baseball. They love their baseball, and I, I'm assuming that had to maybe energize you too through that year. Oh, it was, I'll never forget first coming here. I was at Outback Steakhouse, and 
you know, fans <laughs> recognized me right away and, and, you know, were just happy that I was here, giving me the confidence that they were looking forward to seeing what I could do and how I could help the team out. And, you know, coming back here, the red is just yeah. incredible. You what know? what, uh, what was your favorite moment of that postseason run as we see a line shot into right catch will be made but what what stands out as you reflect on that. I look at the New York series with the catch in left field and then Yachty comes back and hits a home run off of uh, the closer and I mean for some reason that sticks out a lot. Um, obviously the World Series itself I started in Detroit so right I got to you know stick it to him a little bit so <laughs> um, that was also cool but you know just, there are so many things there it's it goes so fast and it's hard to pick up but you know the defensive lap lapses of Detroit you know the great defense we had David Eckstein All hitting doubles left and right you know I mean you know it's just you could go on and on it's a lot of good memories you probably think too about Adam Wainwright, Carlos Beltran, and that that final out. Oh, big curveball, yeah, and even to Brandon Inch to close it out, slider off the plate. I mean, I could recollect everything yeah. that goes on. You know, it's uh, for me now. It's like my kids don't even. My kids are so young; they didn't even. They think I was Uncle Jared. You know, <laughs> because they get to watch him, and I'm done. But you got to put on some tapes of that World Series. Yeah, and it's just. It's good. It's good for the family. It's good for for everything you try so hard to do in your career. And to be in a city like this, it was, uh, I mean, look at this. It's great. Aaron Heilman on the mound, and Molina hit that home run as Albert Pujols and Yachty had the handshake ready. And there's that patented Uncle Charlie number 50. Who was that nasty or what? Amazing. Still doing it. <laughs> Still doing it is right. <laughs> Who are you looking forward to uh, catching up with this weekend? Well, we've been up in the suite here, and I mean, they're pouring in. You know, it's, yeah. you see the faces, and uh, everybody's so excited to see each other, and um, memories start coming back, and asking what you're doing these days. And it's nice to see everybody kind of doing something in baseball, whether it's on TV or coaching or. Uh, Back at the high school, or like watching Uncle Jared. <laughs> yeah, or watching you know, Uncle Jared. <laughs> watching Uncle Jared. Yeah, that's yeah. It, it, that's it, about the only time I go to games, though. That's, watch your brother pitch. Yeah, or my kids, and that's that's how it goes. It may sound crazy, but when you're labeled a world champion, does it change your life a little bit, especially initially when you win that World Series, and and you were such a big part of it. I, I think there's no doubt. I mean, we're coming back ten years later right. and celebrating it. Um, it had been a while at the time for St. Louis. Um, obviously, they've continued to have success, but um, you just never know if it's ever going to happen again. So, um, you know, it, it was the ceiling for me. Um, you wish every game after that had the same intensity. I bet. Uh, it's, it's the best. There's no getting around it. Three and one as they pitched around the eighth place hitter to get to Chen, who, by the way, is over 36 after his strikeout back in the third. Well, at least you put the ball in play against Detroit, as we saw. Good things happen, right? That's right. Especially when Verlander's on the mound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he'll appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, when he's on the mound, you're just like, oh, let me get this ball down. Let me do my job. Yeah. Just get it down. Yeah. That's I mean, like the, the playoffs turn into that. Let me just do my job today. I mean, you, you stop worrying about everything else. In the moment, that's all you can be in is in the moment. But like you said, put the ball in play, and oh, I thought that might be a specialty. <laughs> a little blooper over the second baseman's head. Did you guys feel baseman. though? And I'll ask this. I'll, you know, Jimmy's talked about it, but did you feel like it was coming together when you guys got to San Diego? Yeah. I mean, once we got in, it was like new life you know wipe that's the slate the, clean kind of thing it, you know and I think the clubhouse was as good as it could be we all enjoyed each other and got along great um, the new people that came in felt comfortable right away and um, yeah once you get to the playoffs you know start a new life and uh, everybody pull on the same rope and go to work 
and you're always going to be a part of history. Well, thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. me. You it's bet. It's a pleasure. Jeff Weaver, World Series champ of 06.